Hello there, YouTubers. It's Gus Astacio from Healing X Outreach. Back at it again. Yes, I'm here waiting for my passenger again. It gives me a chance to do a quick video. And uh, I want to mention that this Saturday we're going to have, for those of you who are interested in history, a uh, debate between a Catholic and an Orthodox on what is known as the Filioque debate. It is the thing that caused the Orthodox and Catholic schism. Of course, there were some other things that were factors in that, but it was probably the primary thing. And the Filioque is that part of the Nicene Creed that says uh, that's about the Holy Spirit. And so that was included later on uh, in the Creed. Uh, the other thing I want to mention is that my buddy Marcus Julian Watson, you saw me on his um, channel. We're going to do a Facebook Live event. It will be on Christmas Day at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. So that's 8 o'clock Eastern, 7 o'clock Central, 6 o'clock Mountain Time, and 5 p.m. on the West Coast, Pacific. So uh, it'll be 5 o'clock Julian Time, 8 o'clock my time. It's the only time that I had a chance to do it, but me and Julian, um, we're going to do a, a Christmas Facebook Live event. We're going to be on for about an hour. We're going to talk a little bit about Christmas, and, um, and we're doing this primarily for those of you, whether you're a Jehovah Witness or not, that are going to be alone on Christmas. So if you're going to be alone on Christmas, if you are shunned by your family, you haven't really developed any form of community outside um, the cult or if you're just a person who just doesn't really have any family uh, or friends to spend time with on Christmas and you're going to be alone we want to spend this hour together with you because um, you know Christmas can be the loneliest time for many people and uh, you know uh, Julian himself you know, is got some activity on Christmas Eve, but really Julian is going to be by himself on Christmas Day. So uh, I wanted to do this for my buddy. I wanted us to do this together for others. And so um, if you're going to be alone on Christmas Day, if you don't have any family or friends, join us. And even if you do, if you have some free time, then, yeah, please join us together on a Facebook Live event at 8 o'clock. You can always uh, friend us up. Marcus Julian Watson, Augusta Nastasio. Uh, Healing X Outreach is also on Facebook. And it'll be a Facebook Live event and um, so that we can talk a little bit about Christmas. What it means um, and maybe a few little facts, little tidbits. I've been putting out Christmas tidbits on Facebook, so I hope you all have been enjoying that. The other thing I wanted to talk about, of course, while I have a little bit of time, is Julian brought up a really good topic on uh, his channel. Uh, his last video was about finances and about um, money. And... Um, he hit a couple nerves with me. I mean, it was really, really good stuff. Not or nerves in a bad way, but nerves in a good way. Um, you know, memories of what it was like to be a witness and how you always had a couple people in the Kingdom Halls that did make good money and did not follow the march of the organization as far as... Um, you know, getting an education, getting a good job, working overtime, getting a management position. Those are all things that, while you wouldn't be disfellowshipped for, but you were kind of ostracized a bit. You know, if you, if you did that, you know, it was like you're not really, you don't really believe in the organization. You don't believe in Jehovah. You don't believe, you know, you're not doing what you're supposed to do as a Jehovah's Witness because we're supposed to spend every second of our time uh, placing magazines and starting Bible studies and really um, trying to um, bring people into the um, witness organization so they can be saved for Armageddon. 
And so making money had a negative in the organization. And, um, and this is going to be a little bit political, but I think that Julian hit a nerve as far as um, ex-Jehovah's Witnesses also. You know, how do we view money? How do we view making money? Have we, since we've left the organization, do we have a negative attitude towards the wealthy or towards the attempt to be, attain wealth? Um, even as a Christian, I mean, should that you know is that something that really Jesus would um, would um, look down upon trying to attain wealth? And I, I want to make it perfectly clear: you'll always have the poor. That's one of the things that Jesus said. The poor will always be with us, and uh, of course, that's until the day that Jesus takes over this fallen world. But um, there were certain uh, things that Jesus said, certain parables that really indicated that he did not have a socialist attitude towards money. I think one of the one of the most memorable parables is the one of the talents, where he gave one person ten talents. He gave another person five talents. And he gave a person one talent. And the one with ten talents invested their money, I guess, in whatever they were able to double. And they, because they 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 were able to um, do well with their money, with the they they doubled their talents to twenty talents. They were, you know, you know, Jesus says, you know, you've done really well. You know, he gives them a pat on the back. Same thing with the guy with five talents. He didn't do quite as well as the guy with the ten talents. But he did increase his talents. And Jesus is like, yeah, you did great. You know, very good. And then the guy with the one talent buried his talent in the ground and he did nothing with it. And um, what does Jesus say? Here's a guy who's the poorest of them all, given the least, and did absolutely nothing with it. And what does Jesus say? He says, take the one talent I gave him away from him and cast him into the darkness because he was wicked. He could have at least put the talent in the bank and it would have gained interest. That's one of the things that Jesus says. So was Jesus a socialist? Not exactly. And, um, and I think that as ex-Jehovah's Witnesses, yeah, we have a couple conservatives politically in the XJW camp. But we have a lot of liberals. And I think it has a lot to do with this third world mentality of being a former Jehovah's Witness. That is, as the witnesses we were taught, that being poor was kind of a good thing and being rich was a bad thing. Let's make it perfectly clear. The Bible says, it doesn't say that money is the root of all evil. It says the love of money is the root of all evil. And there, there is a goal to attaining a comfortable lifestyle or even, um, you know, if, if you're fortunate enough, creative, creative enough, hardworking enough, you can be rich. You can be wealthy. And there's a good thing about people that are wealthy and people that are rich or people that have a good amount of money, you know, where they're not poor. Is that they're able to do more. They're able to do more for others. They're able to do more for the poor. They're able, if they have companies, employ people and give them a gainful living style instead of being on welfare. And uh, there is this tendency to view, and I just recently saw Candace Owens versus, uh, I think, what's his name, Russell Brand debate, where there's this mentality, and it, it's not just in the Jehovah's Witnesses, but it's a mentality that 
that there's something wrong with being rich. There's something wrong with being wealthy. And that rich people are not doing their fair share. And uh, that capitalism is evil. And, and uh, I think that we look at the word and we don't really think about what it really means. Capitalism. Free market capitalism. I'll tell you what capitalism is. Free market capitalism is gives people that are poor the capacity, the capacity to become rich. It gives people that are poor to maybe not become rich, but to have a decent lifestyle, to get out of poverty. People that work hard in a free market, people that are creative, can succeed. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with talented people succeeding. There's nothing wrong with people that work hard succeeding. There's nothing wrong with people that have wisdom more than maybe the next man succeeding. It's about what you do with your life. Um, me and Julian saw a video when I was down there visiting him, and it was about successful people watch less TV. In fact, successful people have a tendency to uh, sleep less. They sleep maybe four or five hours because they are constantly working. Um, is that the love of money? It could be. It could be. It could be uh, time not well spent if it sacrifices time that you should spend with others that you care about. But um, I just want you to think about that. Do you have a negative view of capitalism? Do you have a negative view of people that are wealthy or people that are rich? 800,000, more than 800,000 people last year in the United States, 2018, became millionaires. Uh, black entrepreneurship increased by 400%. I believe that those numbers are not mutually, exist, uh, mutually exclusive that they're cohesive. I believe that a lot of the 400% of the black entrepreneurs became millionaires. And that's only done by people who work hard, people who are willing to take risks, people who have dreams. There's nothing wrong with pursuing the American dream. So uh, are we still stuck in this cultic mentality that you gotta be poor or that rich people are bad? Or that we shouldn't chase our dreams. Absolutely not. And I'm a guy who works three jobs. And I value the time that I get to take. You know, I, I'm i not rich. And uh, I'm definitely not smart enough. Uh, or else I would have gone to college and, and done a lot better things with my life. But because of the cult I was in, I didn't invest my time in actually living a comfortable lifestyle. But somehow I... I I'm, I'm working three jobs. I may not, I'm not going to have to work three jobs all my life. But I will have a comfortable lifestyle one day where I won't have to sacrifice so much of my time to work. But even in, in so doing, I do spend time with my family. I make sure I have quality time for my family. And I know that one day that quality, t quality time will increase because I'm working hard for that. Something to think about. Is the cultic negative view of rich or wealth or the pursuit of wealth still in our brains? Are we, or are we just lazy? I mean, because I'll tell you one thing, the thing I remember is that the witnesses were extremely lazy when it came to work, working for themselves. Uh, I remember they were the worst tippers also, and I work in the food industry. I remember Richmond, uh, the, the, the town of Richmond where we had our assemblies, that the restaurants and businesses complained to the society because people weren't tipping. I used to manage a restaurant, and the drivers, I, ran, I managed a pizza delivery place, drivers complained that the Jehovah Witnesses, when I would tell them, oh, you're going to a Jehovah Witnesses house, that they wouldn't tip them. This cheapened mentality. 
It's, uh, and that's the one thing that sometimes poverty does is that you want to hold on to the little that you have instead of being generous. So, there's nothing wrong with pursuing things, especially with the goal of sharing the wealth that you may obtain by giving people jobs or even by helping your relatives or the destitute. Um, one last thing, I do have a, a, a person that I care about at one of my jobs and she's a little Afghan Muslim lady. She never had any children and she works really hard at the giant. They don't give her enough hours. And uh, she works part time there and she doesn't get welfare. And she's a United States citizen. And uh, I do what, everything, everything I can to help this woman. She's become kind of my adopted mother. And uh, so, you know, maybe this around this time of the season, you can adopt a mom or adopt a brother or a sister, a, a person who's in need, and share what excess that you have or the little bit that you have with somebody. Every year um, for Christmas, very small thing, and it's not, and I do little things throughout the year for her, but you know, it's not here to toot my horn, but I, I just want to encourage people to to help someone in need. And um, this is the person that I have close to me at one of my jobs, and I and I and I care about her. She says, "Why do you do this? Why do you always?" <laughs> Last week, she wanted to borrow some money. I told her to keep it. She said, "Why?" I said, "I said because I care." So that's, that's one of the other benefits. If you have extra, if you have a little more, if you have a comfortable lifestyle, then you have more to give. And so that's, that's a great thing to do around this time of the season, whether it's of your time or manna. God bless you all. See you Christmas evening at 8 o'clock, 5 o'clock on the West Coast. And um, check out our Filioque debate. Um, this Saturday. Bye-bye.